Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa in the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Um, so I do climate change uh, research. Um, I'm also an engineer. I studied in engineering physics and um, I'm also a uh, physicist. I did a master's degree in uh, laser physics. Published uh, many uh, pa peer-reviewed papers and conference uh, uh, presentations, etc. In a previous life, um, about a year ago, I did a uh, YouTube video. You can Google it. It's got the title: um, "Can Sea Level Rise? Can Global Sea Level Rise Seven Meters by 2070?" And I went through um, some basic analysis, looking at doubling rates of ice melt from Greenland and Antarctica, and came up with uh, uh, a number that, uh, you know, based on a doubling period of about seven years, which has held over about the last uh, two decades or so for both Greenland and Iceland uh, uh, ice melt, um, I came up with a sea level rise of, you know, and, and it wasn't uh, aggressive or anything, conservatively, you know, it, the, the numbers just, if you get exponential uh, increase then that builds very quickly so yeah the answer to that is the, the question is yes you could get seven meters of sea level rise by 2070. Um, I took a lot, a lot of flack um, at that time uh, mostly from scientists for coming up with such a video um, so the reason why I'm doing this video is people have asked me well in light of the recent developments with Antarctic sea ice melt and Greenland sea ice melt um, and, uh, you know, uh, Jim, James Hansen, one of the world's most famous uh, climatologists, has just uh, co-authored a paper. He's a principal author with 16 different scientists um, asking this very question, you know, given ice melt uh, that we're seeing and also the historical uh, paleo records on ice melt and also computer modeling, um, does it make any sense that, like, uh, to assume that the melt rates and sea level rise are linear uh, as the IPCC um, assumes um, or do they follow uh, exponential trends? So that's the uh, big question. So, and this paper just, um, this will be out this week, although you know, there's been embargoed copies uh, which are floating around and I happen to read one of them. So basically, in the paleo records, if we look at the Eemian time period, which was the last interglacial period, or the last very warm period, about 130,000 years ago, the temperature at that time, we know, um, was about a maximum of about two degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial. Now, um, given, you know, this very warm year, you know, we're, we're about a degree warmer than pre-industrial, degree Celsius warmer now. So the Eemian was only a degree warmer at the most. In fact, some studies show it was only a few tenths of a degree warmer. So we're getting very close to that type of uh, temperature um, now. And at that time period, uh, sea level was five to nine meters higher uh, than it is today. So what does that mean? It means a given time we're going to end up with five to nine meters higher sea level rise. Typically um, in the Eemian, also known as the marine isotope stage 5e, um, so in this time period um, the sea level um, rate of rise was you know, about a meter in a century but there's a study that does show and it's mentioned in the Hansen paper that sea levels quite conceivably rose very quickly at some intervals you know a few meters in uh, a decade or two um, so some catastrophic uh, break off of say you know West Antarctic ice sheet or a big chunk of Greenland um, ice sheet broke off causing a very rapid uh, sea level rise. So a couple meters in a decade or two. Um, the other thing to note is um, 
that so so basically we're we're looking at uh, very nonlinear rise. There's nothing linear about most things in in uh, life or in physics or in physical systems. You know they respond linearly um, within a certain range, and then you go outside of that range, you pass thresholds or tipping points, and uh, you go to much faster responses in the system relative to the forcing. So the forcing might still be going up linearly, you know, incrementally, but the response of the system uh, goes up a significant amount. Um, nothing in proportion to the forcing. So this is what we term a nonlinear uh, system. Um, so this paper yeah, it's very significant. I mean, they looked at um, models and uh, they, they looked at the uh, paleo records and they looked at what is happening today. And um, the paper basically concludes that there's nothing linear about sea level rise. There's nothing linear about melt rates and so on um, from the uh, main ice caps. So it adds weight to the paper. Now, when I came up with that number, seven meters by 2070, um, I'm expecting all, you know, doublings. I'm expecting these nonlinearities. I'm expecting um, the melt rates to continue to double with a doubling period of seven to seven years or so, um, even five years in some some more recent, uh, uh, you know, more recently. So. That, that's from Greenland and Antarctica, doubling rates in five to seven years. You know, so you get that sea level rise. And, you know, all of the information coming out from, uh, you know, if you look at this, the Arctic sea ice, for example, um, I did a video just a few days ago on Arctic sea ice, the latest, you know, and we're gonna get, we're heading to this blue ocean event where there's no sea ice in the Arctic. Um, and the first year that happens, it would be maybe a week or two in September, a month maximum. Within a few years, it's uh, the bracketing month, so um, August, September, October will be clear of ice. And then tack on a month on either side of that, that would be five months clear. And then within about a decade or so, um, conceivably there'd be no sea ice at all. Um, in the Arctic year round. Now, of course, melt rates on Greenland will skyrocket when that happens. Already, Greenland is, get, is much darker. There's a lot more rain events than snow events. That rain is undercutting through the ice. Um, there's a lot of melt water going to the bedrock, lubricating the ice on the bedrock, uh, increasing the sliding motion of that ice. So we have a very, very highly nonlinear system. So it per makes perfect sense to, you know, look at it that way and not to, you know, pretend um, as the IPCC does and many climate scientists do that, you know, things are just going to proceed with in climate change in a linear fashion. It's just, it's just the not 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 the reality of the situation. So. Um, so you could, so, so, and, and what's happening in, uh, Antarctica, uh, basically in, uh, Antarctica, we know that large parts of the West Antarctic ice sheet are grounded on bedrock, which is below sea level, and, uh, it's melting, um, from warm seawater, warm ocean water is going underneath. I mean, that's obvious, right? You know, the GRACE uh, Anomaly Satellite is measuring mass loss in green in Antarctica and it can only be due to um, warm water underneath because the temperature on the surface um, is above zero or below zero for, for almost all year. I mean, but we have seen uh, cases recently where both in Antarctica and in the Arctic, the temperatures have been unbelievably high like, uh, you know, part, one part of Antarctica went to, uh, I think it was 67 degrees Fahrenheit or something recently. And, uh, you know, even in the Arctic, uh, 
you know, even 80 degree type temperatures. I mean, we're in a topsy-turvy world. Uh, we're in a weather-weirding world because the jet streams are completely messed up. Um, so this is a, clearly this is a global emergency situation, you know, and uh, we are approaching perhaps this, this elusive tipping point in human behavior when people wake up and say, aha, you know, I have to worry about climate change. And I think what we'll do is, uh, you know, we'll vote from the not care, pe public not caring about climate change to uh, total chaos and total fear. You know, we're all doomed in, in a decade or two. And then, uh, you know, then that will lead to the reality of, uh, you know, taking action. And humans are the largest negative feedback. So, um, you know, if you're watching this video, please share it. Please discuss it with friends. Um, you know, with sea level rise of, uh, you know, many meters, um, you know, sooner than people think, it will rewrite the geography of our planet. It will cause mass migrations away from coastlines. It will cause huge economic losses. And, uh, you know, of course, if the methane starts coming out in, in increased quantities from the Arctic, which I expect it will, as well as the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, my colleagues expect it will, then it means that we must do uh, certain things. A, we must slash, um, get, off, get off carbon uh, as quickly as possible. Not in 20 years, not in 30 years. Just, uh, there's no point in building any fossil fuel infrastructure, no pipelines, no new uh, coal plants, nothing. Completely renewable energy, get off carbon completely. That's uh, given, we have to do that. We have no choice if we want to survive on this planet. Um, the next thing is to, we need to cool the Arctic. We have methods to do this. We need to cool the Arctic. Um, that will buy us a bit of time. It will at least keep the methane from coming up. And uh, because once it starts coming up, then all bets are off without doing anything. But we can still keep our uh, finger on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, you know, we can still have some control if we, of the system and keep it from going into this nonlinear regime. Um, we're in, we're in, we're definitely in abrupt climate change now, but humans are the biggest negative feedback and we could take us out of that regime um, if we have the will. We certainly have the money to do it. I mean, there's no shortage of money for military. You know, the big threat is not a military threat, it's a climate change threat. So we need to divert those funds. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so uh, you know, at least uh, we, first we need, you know, people to understand the risks that we face. So hopefully, I mean, that's why I do all these videos to uh, try to get people to uh, understand the threats that we face. Thank you.